Alright boys, what's up? It's the Hylomaniac. And finally, for months and months, people wondered when would it happen. The highly awaited, much anticipated setup tutorial. <laughs> Which I've been trying to make. You know, I made one and it, got, it was like 35 minutes of me just rambling and... At the end of it, I literally was just like, you know what? Setups just don't matter. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, that's a big waste of time. To come to that conclusion at the end, but uh, yeah. Um, you know, there's, you know, there's, I'm not saying it's everybody. And it's really not. Um, I don't think it's as many people as some would say but they're just like yeah yeah they're only fast because of a setup and you know which i'm not saying isn't true like i'm sure on asphalt i'm sure that's a thing but on dirt it's so much more in the driver's hands um so i don't know let's just get the fuck right back in um go watch i'll put a link in the description it's my setup tutorial from like just over a year ago and um We'll see if anything's changed. Uh, I, I'd say I got faster. That's good. I'd say I like this. I'd like to think that I learned more, <laughs> or I know what I'm doing a little bit more. But um, I don't know. It's just like I I don't come like I I don't know anything about sprint cars in real life at all. I just know what the game <laughs> what this game does to them. Um, so, well, first, the uh, baseline setups just got um, updated a little bit. And plus, there was the update also to where the, um, the shocks, that's the bump and rebound stiffness, the shocks, they don't affect the ride height. So, see, it's 1469 or 68. But this used to affect the ride height, changing that a lot. Now they don't. So... It didn't take a weighing adjustment, but essentially the shocks prior to this update were just a, a third adjustment for your ride heights. <laughs> um, but I went out, I hear yeah, 27% track at Knoxville. I went out, I ran my setup, just my heat setup, six gallons, and you got low fives and you got one high four and low fives, all right? So then I threw on the baseline setup, and you got kind of low sixes, mid to low sixes, and a high five in there. So that's essentially one tenth off. And you're like, oh, oh, that's a lot. Not at all. Not at all in dirt track racing. You could easily make up with solid, good, consistent driving. You can make up a tenth. Um, and then the third stint was the setup that I'll put on right now. This is essentially. Uh, the Semmelman setup. This is essentially what everybody ran and is still running since it was found out in like the first or second season of dirt. Um, you always want to just run max tire pressures. Always stagger. Um, pretty obvious what it does. Just uh, bigger right rear, so more grip, but also you know tightens the turn radius a little bit. But we're at Knoxville. So you don't need max stagger or anything like that because the corners are big and wide. Um, also, also, look at this. Uh, I had I don't know how much that affected the car, but the baseline had 25 wing. I don't know if it would have gone faster or 24 because you are flat out all the way around Knoxville. Because this is the baseline setup I'm just moving around right now. Um, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it being a tenth off. The track didn't really slow down because... Uh, I went back out in this last session here and well I was a lot slower than this and this is this is this is all right see like I said a lot of people are just looking for an easy fix you know if they think they have the setup they can go fast so that's what I'm just giving you for all those lazy fucks out there um, that you know just want to get a setup and think they're gonna go fast go ahead use this setup because this is essentially what everybody runs you know all the fast guys they all say it everybody's essential that's why nobody practices nobody practices in sprint cars like you see in late models because everybody's essentially running the same exact setup <laughs> 
can see I know everything because it's just memorized. You know, throw that down, don't need that. Fuel, run a 34 gear. All right, another thing is, if you run a 486 gear everywhere except uh, Lima Land and Kokomo in 410s at the moment. And in, in sprint cars in the 360s, uh, a 534 is essentially the 486 of 360s, at least for me. I run 534 on every single half mile. Never above, never below, I just go 534. Unless it's like Charlotte, which is a little shorter and it's super tacky. Maybe go up to a 42 or a 49 or even Volusia. But if it's Knoxville, if it's USA, if it's Eldora, sorry, hiccups. Um, fucking 534 is where I'm at for 360s. Um, but yeah, so this is the setup. If everybody just wants an easy fix. If you can't be competitive with this setup, because if we look at this, this is in this from lap 19 to lap 26, I put in this exact setup. And what I run then? So we had low fives here and a four. We ran mid five, low five, low five, low five, low five, low five, mid five, low five. All right. So that is within a half a tenth of my setup that I normally run. And, cause, and then even like I went, I went back out here to see if the track got faster at all. This was with my heat setup again. I put on this first session setup down here, mid six, mid six, low six, low six, low six. So you got a 508 right here, but then with my own setup, uh, I had a six hundred or just a six flat. So this setup might just now just might even be faster than it, <laughs> and that was a six gallons. I went out and put six gallons every every single run. Um, but yeah, there you go. It should be 1050s fronts. Disregard everything I said before that. But yeah, I don't know. Like, there's no, all right, they're like, all right, what's the go-to that you go to for a setup on a track? I don't know. All my setups are pro like 360s. Here's more proof that, you know, all setups are essentially the same because, you know, a lot of people, they might run a 360 and then they'll just make that a 410 set also. And that, theoretically, it works for everything. But I'm sure none of my 360 setups look the same as my 410 just because, I don't know, just because they're different. But they're still, you know, they can still be the same speed. <laughs> like I said, this, this setup is at least within a half a tenth of with what I run. If not faster, I'm going to slick, according because uh, my other one was so slow when I went back out there. It used to be 9... Well, I guess it could be 950s now. It used to be 950s. So you have front all the way... The torsion bars, it's just ride height, 645. Go down, 622. Torsion bar stop is just a smaller increments of it. And 619, you know, it's so... It's just smaller increments. So if we go from, so we're at this, we're at 645. One click of a bar stop is going to take us down to a 640. But if we do one click of a diameter, it's going to take us down to a 640. That's when I put this up again. All right, so, see, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, essentially, every 95% every of fast guys are going to have some kind of setup based like this. And now, in, in two updates ago, it was different because when, remember I said the shocks used to change ride heights, but now they don't. But because they changed the left rear, it would fail cross weight. Right now, this setup's got 46.8 cross weight, which is kind of a lot. Um, but in a previous build, this would be like 41 when the, when the shocks were hooked up to it. So you couldn't, go, you couldn't have a 3.9. A 3.9 is what they call a tie down in the business. I only know that because I was told that by somebody. <laughs> um, but it essentially makes the car, it, just, it, it turns the car. It makes the car the easiest to turn left. It, I don't know, collapses the shock or spring or something. And running that, even at a big wide track like Knoxville, works fine, you know? So you can run it at a short track like uh, Lima Land where the fucking corners are so sharp. But then even at Knoxville, it still works too. Anything pretty much works if you drive the car right. Keyword, hard pills to swallow, tough truth, <laughs> uh, if you drive the car right. And that's just what a lot of people fail to do. And eh, maybe I'll make up like some videos of common mistakes that I see. Um, but it's just, 
yeah, I mean, I don't know. The cars are so dull. You can sit here and test for hours and you'll know, change something. You'll be like, ooh, I think that found out speed. Then you'll change it back to what you had and you'll be like, ooh, wait, I like that better now. You know, there's been time after time after time where I, you know, I used to run five fives and you don't like that. And then you run maybe a three over six and then I've come back to five fives and then you run a five over eight in the right rear. Just because there's no solid, there, there's like I said, the only thing I do consistently to my setups is probably the left rear has a 1050 and a 300 in height does it make the car faster i don't know <laughs> it's just what i have it's probably the most consistent thing on all my setups um there's there's nothing that just makes the car go faster it's it's just uh, like i said i'm saying like i said if you watch my last tutorial 90% of a setup is just handling, good handling. If you can put the car where the good dirt is, and that takes, and that requires a little bit of skill, maybe not on a track like this. He, on a track like this, you'll just run right above the slick, and that's where all my laps were. You just come in, run right above the slick. And, you know, I'm sure people see that if you race the officials at Knoxville, the slick goes up and up and up to the cushion. All right, and then once it does get to the cushion, that's when you'll see more racing because there'll either be mistakes on the cushion or you guys guys have trying to run the bottom then and they uh, either can't run it enough through a slick they can't run the slick good enough that's when you call it that's when that's when a track becomes racy because then it's not just holding the throttle all the way around following the guy because there's so much drip here it's just it's actually where you have to decide what line to run and blah 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 and you have to you have to be able to run a line at its best you know all the pro guys they can run within a half a tenth on a track like this probably consistently for 10 laps in a row be within a half a tenth of each of their lap times because they because this would be considered an easy line right now just right through the middle you know a good driver will hit that a hundred percent of the time without any screw-ups you know, a decent driver will only hit it 75% of the time. They'll either get too low in the slick or they'll wash out in the cushion. But, you know, then once it, once it is up to the cushion, and it is a little more difficult line, all right, then good drivers are only going to hit it. They'll make a mistake on it once in a while, but say 90% of the time. But then only a decent driver, you know, with not a lot of experience on the cushion, they're only going to hit it maybe 40, 50% of the time. They're going to hit like... Uh, you know, the actual decent corner and to maximize the speed of the corner, you know, and all the guys with thousands of laps, um, they're, they, they're able to, fucking stupid starter, um, they're able to, you know, hit any corner, maximize the speed in one shot when they have to. That's what the real good drivers can do. Oh, gotta grab the bottom of this corner, okay, boom, hit it, first try, no problem. When you know uh, other drivers, they might, you know, they're all right, gotta go to the bottom of this corner. Oh, no, missed the bottom, you know, lost three tenths. Now I'm stuck battling the guy behind me. But um, I really haven't explained much about setups <laughs> so far in this video. That's what I say. Click the link, go to my other torsion bars. It's just ride heights. Uh, just read what the shocks do. Uh, more bump is gonna make it tighter on entry. It's pretty self-explanatory. Shocks you, probably matter less now than they did before, because before they used to just be an, uh, a third adjustment of the ride heights, essentially. And then wheel spacing, outer looser, in tiger, this one, uh, bigger's looser, out further, or I'm sorry, out further tiger, in looser. This is just essentially helps the turn radius more it doesn't make the car looser but it narrows the turn radius the lower you go so i got a shorter track you might have something like that wing angle the other thing the top wing um it used to be you wouldn't be able to touch it everybody would just have to run zero um but now it seems in the later updates um you can run more you know with fuel in the car you might start at top wing at two and either move it forward as it burns off or move it backwards as the track slicks off. Um, I pretty much run 22, 24 everywhere, especially half miles. The only time you'll add more wing is when it does get slick. Like, say it does say it, it does get up to the wall, then you're on the cushion. And you know you're going to be hitting the bottom a couple times. Then maybe just add wing to it. Um, 
front toe in is essentially a second i think of it as a second adjustment for front wing so you know say you got the 28 front wing but you still don't like how it's not turning enough for you uh add more uh negative front toe in i think that all kind of makes it it helps it turn in a little bit at least in my opinion but like i said now so if you just run this setup you can run it everywhere just change the gear a little bit um besides you know for the shorter tracks but then because now essentially the only thing that changes the cross wig up here is um is the torsion bar diameter so you guys say you run 46 at knoxville so all right say a smaller track like volusia you want a lower cross weight because it's uh it's a small technically it's a smaller turn radius so a way you could lower cross weight is either add to the right rear going up you know you're down to 45 because that makes the car a little bit looser lower cross weight is looser higher is tighter theoretically but if you if you lower the right side here uh yeah it's gonna lower it down to 42 but in my opinion i don't know if it's factual or not but lowering the right front makes it a little bit tighter you'll see here if i raise if i lower the left front it's gonna go up to 47 now the cross weight but your car is going to be loose with the lower left front. In my opinion, in my experience, that's what it does. <laughs> so that's kind of backwards on that end. But then in the left rear, yeah, higher, it's going to raise the cross weights. So now we're failing tech. Your left rear has got too, is too high. Uh, I never look at the left side weight. I don't know if that has anything to do with nose weight. doesn't matter. Just kind of cross weight in the feel of your car. And... You've pretty much got to just learn to... I mean, look at my brother. You know, my brother has the, the best setups um, one can have. You know, and he's not exactly knocking it out of the park. <laughs> you know, um, but you just got to know how to maximize your speed. You got to learn to do that. And one place you can learn to help learn where you lose speed is in the 305 cars. You know, because that's fixed setup and the cars are so slow, it's hard to make a mistake. Um, but you realize when you do make the smallest mistake that you'll lose a lot of speed. So, yeah, a small mistake in a 360 is less. You're not going to lose as much speed because it's not about keeping the momentum up as much. But if you can learn not to make those small mistakes, corner after corner after corner, someone might run, you know, lap after lap, and they're like, well, I'm, I'm still slow. What the heck? I'm, you know, I'm turning the car. I'm not making any mistakes, but I'm, I, I assure you. You, all right, you might not be making the, the, any mistakes, but you're not running the most perfect line to maximize your speed in that corner. Or maybe that you'll run a fast corner, but it doesn't set you up well for the next corner, so therefore you lose speed on the other end of the racetrack. So I don't know. That's just... You either have it or you don't. <laughs> it's hard to say. So I guess it... I, I recommend if you're completely saw lost on setups or looking for setups, just throw this one in. See how competitive you are. You should be, like I said, this was, I think, a half a tenth of mine. If you just run this, see how well you do, um, and just make use this as your baseline. Don't use the iRacing ones. Use this as your baseline and um, learn to adjust it from there learn make this your baseline because it should be able to work at every setup if, if you're still slow then you got a problem <laughs> then um then you know it's not the setup because this setup is plenty fast and it's what at pretty much what every fast guy's setup is based on everyone's setup is probably just you know a couple different clicks different you know click here a click there all right something like that <laughs> <laughs> is what uh, a race winging setup would be then so i don't know a any fast guy will tell you the cars are dull you know looking for speed is pretty much a waste of time i, I, I like i'll get an inch sometimes where i really like to make setups and you know i enjoy making a setup but that's just trying to find something that handles actually testing and trying to find speed like, that bug is a crap on me. I hate that. I, you know, I don't do that <laughs> because there's no a test session like this doesn't do it because you know because the track's always changing on you. 
you know why was uh was the track getting slower i don't know because on this i ran this baseline setup but then i put my other setup in and i was i was almost a tenth off so and then obviously there's nothing consistent about a race every race is different because the track is changing with what where cars run on it but i'm rambling and i don't want to anymore so um if you like if you enjoyed maybe it helps you hope it does you know I'd rather there, there's not enough good fast sprint car drivers out there. Things sprints have been on the service for two years, and still got so many people with their heads in their asses. Um, so I hope it help. Subscribe. I don't care. I don't upload anymore. Whatever. But uh, yeah, peace the fuck out. <laughs>